Hey everybody, welcome back to new videos channel and I know I'm a bit late, but Nuxt 4 is out and Nuxt 5 will be soon too. Let's check it out, here we go. All right, all right, all right. Probably you already know, probably you've seen the posts of the official Nuxt account, maybe the blog post, otherwise links to that in the description, of course, for after the video. But yes, Nuxt 4 is out. Asterisk. I mean, an alpha is out. Probably the second alpha when you watch this video right now, depending on whether it's published or read, but definitely the first alpha is out at the moment. We'll have a look at that in a bit. So before we dive into that, you might wonder what took so long and what happened and how do I have to upgrade? So this is a little comprehensive video in addition to all the other resources, such as the episode with Danny Rowe and Deja View uh, and the blog post and so on to answer exactly these questions. And we start pretty simple with the timeline, saying, okay, here's the Alpha 1 release, the pre-release, right? It's on GitHub, on the Nuxt repo, and there we go. 4.0.0 Alpha 1 is the first Alpha release of Nuxt for early testing, so you out there can just straight away say, alias that thing, and test it out, right? Especially if you have compatibility version 4 running already, there shouldn't be much of a change. So if you do that already, well, no problem, just um, alias it and then you can even turn off the compatibility version, or if you're rebrave, even upgrade it to five. That's already allowed, but that will be the next step. More to that in a bit. Skip the first part, the first sentence here, but we'll come back to that. The most important part is Nuxt for Alpha will ship June 2nd, 2025. Well, that's already happened, right? With a stable release at the end of the month. So now we know, okay, Nuxt 4 will come, at least that's how it's planned, at the end of June. There might be a chance that this is slightly delayed, we don't know about it yet, but right now the plan is all the way there. And of course, if you out there help testing, chances are it will be rather end of June than later. So once again, feel free to do. And here's the interesting part, Nuxt 5 will come later, once Nitro V3 is ready. And some of you might wonder, now wait, we all waited for Nuxt 4 so long and now it's released without Nitro? And Nuxt 5 is coming later, possibly still this year, when Nitro V3 is out and integrated? How does it play together? And once again, Daniel explained it very well in the Deja View episode, but the TLDR is, yes, waiting, especially for Nitro changes for a long time. But right now, so many people already use the compatibility version, and there are a lot of changes that are Nuxt related, like a good amount of breaking changes that we want to ship anyway. But they are not related to the server folder or to anything Nitro related. So in a way, even if Nitro V3 would be out right now and we would add it and cause another wave of breaking changes, right? We don't know exactly what they will entail right now, but just assuming that there will be some, that would be a, an issue. So people with compatibility version 4 on would have to migrate again. And on the other hand, with two major versions, you can easier separate breaking changes from Nitro and from the Nuxt related parts. So in a way, that's a reward to the people using compatibility version and also a more graceful way of upgrading for all of you out there. So it makes a lot of sense, actually. And if you wonder what's actually left, because yeah, of course, testing, fixing bugs, it's actually very important, report the issues to Nuxt or any modules. Yeah, modules are there too. Well, first of all, there will be upstream PRs for community modules. So in the Nuxt modules registry, if you have any module up there or using something from there, we'll make sure that some changes breaking changes, improvements, and so on. Everything for V4 that we can send PRs up there. Well, with me, I mean, mainly Daniel, as he's usually doing that in a semi-automated manner, and that's um, always impressive. So ideally, all these modules will have a way to upgrade pretty easily, reducing issues like how can we make sure the ecosystem catches up. Luckily, compared to V2 to V3, right, the, aka the painful migration, 3 to 4 doesn't have that many moving pieces. As said before, there's a good amount of breaking changes, so not too many not to cater with, and mostly they are well, towards module authors or when you well go really deep into the internals of Nuxt. And of course, the folder structure that I've talked about in a different video already, somewhere up here. And then of course, there will be a full upgrade guide. So right now we have a full upgrade guide that's available, but of course it is not full as in when Nuxt 4 will be released, we'll do a full thing there. But nevertheless, please feel free to uh, look into that. I've also sent over uh, a link to you in the video description. And there are also some videos linked here, actually. 
So if you're interested in upgrading Nux, this is still a good way to go and you can see, okay, how to change it, how to test it. Right now, this is slightly outdated because compatibility version v4 is not as good as actually running the alpha itself and aliasing. So we will update that. Maybe it's already updated when you watch the video. And of course, then there are more and more information around how you can use code mode to migrate, new directory structure, and all the changes. Now, this list here seems quite significant, but to be fair, it's not really that much. We mainly want to make sure that you out there have a good overview of what's actually happening under hood. And we always make sure to point out how severe it changes and how much impact it has in your application. So sometimes there are things that are like, oh yeah, moderate or minimal, like the deduplication of route metadata. For most of the changes, you probably don't have to do much. For some things you might have to, but most importantly, the changes are all listed. So you have a comprehensive overview of what actually changed. And to be fair, this is very important for every major upgrade. So even if you test things out and see, hmm, weird, there are some changes that we can't cater to, well, then you at least know what has changed and what you can adopt too. So that's great. But all in all, the idea is to make it not complicated, to make it easy to upgrade. And to show you even how easy that is, Daniel actually migrated the whole Elk application, which is by far not small, to compatibility version 4, which is more or less alpha 1 right now, in around 15 minutes during a workshop of his next to conference. So 15 minutes is pretty decent. And most of the things were like files moving around. So the actual code change is not as much. So we see a lot of like, okay, files moved, files moved, files moved. Obviously, that's more than fine. We have some things where paths are adapted, a new app folder is used, we use a different alias, so the uh, double tilled instead of just a single one, and so on and so on. So these are minor changes, and they're not necessarily complex, but they might take a little bit of time. Still, 15 minutes is pretty decent, I would say. And luckily, a lot of people also wrote on social media that they already migrated over to an alpha, or at least compact version 4, or even used that from the get-go, and they had no issues, which is great, of course. Another great thing that comes to Nuxt and the ecosystem is actually something that's not even, well, not that much at least, related to the framework code itself, but more to the docs. And it's this lovely version switcher over here. So now you can switch between v3 and v4. And for a lot of things, you won't see a big difference because, well, between 3 and 4, a lot of things stay the same. But for things only available in 4, you will see the changes there. And that also means you can always jump back to 3, and in the future, also jump to version 5. So also, no more worries about finding the right version for documentation. Luckily, these are all published as package now as well, so they can be consumed by LLMs. So that's a very big plus, and I'm happy to see, once again, the developer experience in mind there. And last but not least, okay, we get release candidates, ideally, for June 23rd. Another round of bug fixing and testing. Uh, at that point, it's also feature freeze or break and change freeze. And last but not least, when we force released, well, then we go on the whole cycle again, and then it's starting adopting the edge releases of H3 and Nitro. Talking about H3, actually, the H3 v2 beta just came out. So Puya released that a couple of hours ago, where we see not only fully written based on web standards, backwards compatible, so little break and changes, and super fast. We have a few things. Please uh, check them out. Link also to that in the description. And maybe there's also a second beta or like beta one out already if you watch the video. That always depends because people are shipping fast out here, right? And it's amazing to see that. Nevertheless, we now know what will happen with Nuxt 4 and Nuxt 5. And yes, you might get two major versions in the year, but it's still better than, first of all, waiting for just the one. So just imagine Nuxt 4 would come out and Nuxt 5 would come out at some point. And then dealing with all the breaking changes at once, it's a bit meh. So instead, all good, do the nuxt related changes now, and then later the Nitro ones. Maybe in the best case, if possible, we might not even need a V5 that urgently, because Nitro, if it's fully backward compatible, why not using a flag, for example? But there are a lot of options there at stake. We'll just see how things go and start with four, and then go to five, once they buffed each other. Any next four questions left or next five, please drop them in the comments. And um, I'll also link to a few other videos that might help you migrating over. Please also share how your migration is going if you give it a try, if you give the alpha a try and so on and so on. This is always valuable to the team. And um, other than that, well, take a look around the channel. And uh, as usual, 
happy hacking. See you in the next one.